Hi guys, welcome to Understanding the Gyro Compass, part two of the video series. Uh, previously, I made part one and I'll give you the link to that in the description section below. In part one, we discussed what a gyro compass is, what is it used for on the ship, and uh, the regulations concerning the gyro compass, how does a gyro compass differ from a magnetic compass, and finally, we discussed what a gyroscope was. In today's video, we'll be talking about the gyroscopic properties, specifically about the properties of uh, rigidity in space or gyroscopic inertia and the property of precession. So once you understand the properties of a gyroscope, then in the third part of the video series, I can tell you how these properties are then used to convert a gyroscope into a gyro compass. Now, I repeat myself that uh, the olden days gyro compass uh, were based on the principles of a gyroscope and the working for gyroscope. The new modern day compasses, of course, uh, are based on the principles of uh, fiber optics and they use fiber optics and the principles of light. But the, the basic principles still remain the same. And that is why I want to start by explaining the concept of the gyroscope. And then I'll slowly move into the modern day gyro compasses, which involve the concept of the light and fiber optics. All right. So let's start with understanding the two main properties of a gyroscope that uh, helps the gyroscope being converted into a gyro compass. All right. So the first property we'll be talking about is gyroscopic inertia. And the second one will be gyroscopic precession. So let's start with the gyroscopic inertia first. So gyroscopic inertia is based on the Newton's first law of motion which stated that every body continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled by external forces to change that state. So how does that come into the concept of a gyroscope? Now in my last video, I told you guys that a gyroscope is like a spinning top if you think about it. A gyroscope has a rotor in the center that you can see it's revolving around the spin axis. That's the yellow color part of the drawing here. And that rotor and based on the mass of the rotor uh, and differing mass requires different uh, requirements. But depending on the mass of the rotor, if the gyroscope gains enough RPM at a particular RPM, which is quite high for a gyroscope, it is about 60,000 odd RPM, it can be made to point in one fixed direction. All right, it's like a spinning top. So if you, you have you ever used a spinning top? So if you if you re remember, or just check up the spinning top videos, if you throw a spinning top on the uh, surface of the earth, you will see that the spinning top, once it gains its in, my RPM, it keeps spinning. It's only when it starts to lose its RPM that it starts to wobble around and loses direction. All right. So that is the principle for gyroscope as well. So once it gains enough RPM, which is based on its mass of the rotor, and this is where the principle of angular momentum come in, it can be made to point in a fixed direction. So imagine that if the gyroscope gains the maximum RPM that it requires, and then is made to point towards a star, which is a fixed direction, a fixed star, it shall continue to point towards the star as long as that RPM is maintained. All right. But however, it is not that simple. Uh, this will happen only if the earth was not spinning on its own axis. All right. So because the earth is also spinning on its own axis and the gyroscope is pretty much situated on the earth, the movement of the earth has an impact on the movement of the gyroscope as well. And I'll tell you how that movement is and what that movement is. So let's get into it. So imagine here that the gyroscope is made to point towards one fixed star. All right. And it continues to do so till of course it has its RPM. So if it is, if the RPM, the maximum RPM or revolutions per minute is maintained for the gyroscope, and it is made to point towards a fixed direction, it should continue to do so based on the law of Newton and gyroscopic inertia. However, for us as viewers on Earth, for us as observers on Earth, we see heavenly bodies like stars and sun and moon rising and setting. Right? So we see an apparent movement of the heavenly bodies throughout the day. So the stars also rise and they set. But the stars, are the stars moving? 
No, the stars are not moving. The star, the sun, they are pretty much fixed where they are. It's us as observers who are moving because of the Earth's rotation around its own axis. But because the Earth's rotation is so slow and we are situated on the Earth, for us we see an apparent motion of the heavenly bodies, the stars, we see them rising and setting. So if I make the gyroscope point towards a fixed star, it will continue to do so. But because we will notice that the star is rising and setting as it goes through its journey from the east to the west, we start to notice an apparent movement of the gyroscope as well, which is made to point towards the star. So if it is continues to point towards the star, it traces the star as the star goes about its journey of rising and setting. And we see a note and apparent motion of the gyroscope axis. All right, and this movement is different when the gyroscope is on the poles and it is different when the gyroscope is at the equator. And we'll talk about these two movements of the gyroscope axis. So the first property of gyroscopic inertia would have worked perfectly if we had made the gyroscope spin to its maximum RPM, then make it point towards one fixed direction because that's what we want the gyros compass to do. We want the gyro compass to point towards one fixed direction, which is the 0, 0, 0 degrees, so that the courses can be laid off, the directions can be measured with respect to 0, 0, 0. And the gyroscope or the gyro compass would have done that if the earth was also not moving beneath it. Because of the earth's movement, there is a force which we call the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force also acts on the gyroscope because of which it cannot keep pointing towards one direction. It starts to drift about its horizontal and vertical axis. All right. So I'll show you a couple of scenarios from which you can understand what this movement is. All right. So the movement about the horizontal plane is known as drift. And the movement about the vertical plane will be known as the tilt. So these are the two movements of the gyroscope or axis of the gyroscope because of which it doesn't stay pointing in one direction. And because of this drift and tilt, the gyroscope makers had to develop methods to counteract for this drift and tilt so that the gyroscope axis can remain horizontal and pointing towards one direction all the time so that it can be used for direction keeping and course measurement. Let's start with the first moment of drift. To understand what drift is, imagine that a gyroscope is placed on the pole of the earth, right on the top of the pole of the earth. And I make the gyroscope spin axis horizontal. You see the yellow line, that's the spin axis. So I make it horizontal and I make it point towards one fixed star. Ideally, if the earth was not spinning, the gyroscope would have kept pointing towards the fixed star. But the earth is not stationary. It keeps moving around its axis because of which we as observers will note that the star is moving with respect to us. Instead of realizing that the star is fixed and we are moving, the, sun, the earth movement is so slow that we think that it's the star that's moving. So that's why even the gyroscope axis will trace the movement of the star. However, on the pole, you will not see the body rising or setting. All you will see is the body going around you because you're you're standing right on top of the earth, right? You're at the pole, absolutely at the pole. And that's what the gyroscope axis does as well. It basically traces the movement of the star, but in one direction only. And that is the movement about the horizontal axis. So it will go round and round and round, but there is no movement about the vertical axis. The movement is only about the horizontal axis because we are right at the pole. So for us, at the pole, there is no rising or setting of the body. Basically, the body is just going round and round. So this apparent movement about its horizontal axis of the gyroscope is known as drift. Conversely, let's talk about tilt now. What is tilt? Tilt is now the motion of the gyroscope axis about its vertical axis. So to understand what tilt is, visualize a gyroscope made again to spin at its maximum rpm and made to point towards a fixed star in space. But this time the gyroscope is kept at the equator. It's not kept at the pole.
For us as observers on the earth, like I said before, when the earth is spinning and as the earth spins so slowly and we as observers move with the earth, for us when we come over the horizon and we see the sun, we think it's the sun that's rising. But it's not the case. It's us who are moving with the earth and we see an apparent motion of the sun rising and sun setting. Similarly, the same thing happens with stars and other heavenly bodies as well. Now, if a gyroscope axis is placed on the equator, as the earth moves, the gyroscope of course will move with it. But since it's made to point towards a fixed direction and a fixed star, what we notice as rising and setting of celestial bodies, we'll basically notice a movement or an apparent movement of the gyroscope axis about its vertical plane because it will trace the body rising and setting. All right. And this is the apparent motion of the star that you will see and a similar motion will be also seen of the gyroscope axis about the vertical plane as you see here. So basically the gyroscope is tracing out the celestial body rising and setting. The same scenario can be viewed from below the south pole as well and you realize what I am talking about here. So the tilt is the movement of the gyroscope axis about the vertical plane whereas the drift is the movement of the gyroscope axis only around the horizontal plane. All right. So that is why drift which is the movement of the gyroscope axis around the horizontal plane is observed or is maximum at the poles and it starts to reduce as you come down from the poles towards the equator and it becomes absolutely zero at the equator. Similarly, and drift is a function of latitude. Drift also equals 15 multiplied by sine of latitude per hour. So that will give you the drift. So if you actually measure it, you can see that at the pole where the latitude is 90 degrees, 15 times sine of 90 degrees is 15 times 1 which is 15 and that's why drift is maximum at the poles whereas drift at the equator will be 15 times sine of 0 degrees latitude which will be 0. Alright, so this, this is what I was telling you about and that's what I'm showing you here. So drift starts to reduce as you come down from the poles towards the equator. Similarly, the tilt is maximum at the equator and what is tilt? Tilt is the movement of the gyroscope axis around the vertical plane. And that's why the tilt is maximum at the equator and starts to reduce as you go from the equator towards the poles and becomes zero at the poles. Tilt is also a function of latitude, but tilt equals 15 times sine azimuth cos of latitude degrees per hour. So if I can take some examples of tilt, tilt at the poles will be 15 times sine azimuth say 0, 4, 5 degrees and cos 90, which is zero. So therefore tilt is zero at the poles, whereas tilt at the equator could be maximum at 10.60 degrees per hour. So I hope you understand the movement of the gyroscope axis. All right, so the gyro will be at rest. What that means is basically there will be no drift and tilt only in the following position on the earth where the equator is placed on the equator with an azimuth along the meridian. That is the gyroscope axis is pointing due north or 0, 0, 0 degrees where drift will be 0 and the tilt will be 0 as well. That is the only time the gyro will be at rest on the surface of the earth. Finally, we also see the property of precession. Now before I go into precession, I just want you guys to understand why we studied drift and tilt because what I was trying to tell you is that the gyroscope could be pointing towards one direction in space and that would have been the best way to make a gyro compass because it would have been pointing towards the true north if we made it do so, but it doesn't do so because the earth is spinning below it. And therefore, the gyroscope axis experiences a movement around the horizontal and vertical plane. In my next video, I'll teach you guys that what was done to counteract for this movement so that the gyroscope axis is always horizontal and pointing towards one fixed direction and there is no drift and tilt about its any of its axes. And that's why it was used as a gyro compass. Before I finish this video today, this is the second property of the gyroscope that I want you guys to understand. Because what I was telling you before that the 
movements of the drift and tilt are counteracted over a period of time they have been counteracted they have been counteracted on the principle of precession because precession or according to precession precession is a property of the gyroscope where if you apply a force in one direction the gyroscope axis moves in a direction 90 degrees away from the direction of force that is the property that would be used over a period of time to place the weights or place some kind of a weighing mechanism so that the constant force is acting on the gyroscope axis in such a way that its movement is about 90 degrees away from the direction of the force but it is made to stay in one direction i'll tell you all about that in my next video don't get too confused or don't get too caught up in that so gyroscope precession is a property where if you apply a force to the axis of the gyroscope the gyroscope will move 90 degrees away from the direction of the force so for today just understand what was gyroscopic inertia what is drift what is tilt why is there a movement of the gyroscope axis about the horizontal and vertical plane and that is because of the earth's movement and what is gyroscopic precession because in my next video well i'll teach you that the gyroscope's drift and tilt was counteracted using the concepts of weights uh, that is where the principle of gyroscopic precession will come in and you will learn how the gyroscope was made to not only point north but keep pointing north keep and settle at north so that it can be used as a gyro compass so guys keep learning keep watching these videos let me know through your feedback through likes on what you thought about these videos if they are not very good let me know i tried my best to simplify the understanding of gyroscope however if it's not uh, doing the job let me know i'm happy to receive some feedback but if you like these videos keep liking keep watching keep subscribing so that you get notification about my further videos as well bye guys study hard